Good morning. This is the time and place for the Zoning Administrator's hearing for September 17, 2008. My name is Edith Fuentes and I will be conducting the hearing as hearing officer. We have two cases today and relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. Let me just quickly go through our hearing procedure. Under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a conditional use permit shall be granted if four required findings are present. One, that the proposed use will be consistent with the elements and objectives of the general plan. Two, that the use and its associated structures and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety, the general welfare or the environment. Three, that the use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding property. And four, that adequate public and private facilities will be provided for the use. If the evidence presented in the application and at the hearing meets the criteria just described, then the zoning administrator can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices, which are mailed to property owners located within 500 or 300 feet of the subject property, physically posted on the site in question, and placed in the local newspaper. The hearing will proceed as follows. I will read a description of the application or the request and then read reports received from other city departments and other letters or communications from interested parties. The applicant will be asked to come forward stating both name and address and will be asked to present the case within a 15-minute time limit. Others in support of or in opposition to the application and any interested parties will be asked to come forward to speak. Again, clearly stating both name and address within a three-minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments if desired in response to testimonies given by preceding speakers within a five-minute time limit. The hearing will be closed and the case taken under submission. After the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who responded to the public notice, either by speaking at this hearing or by submitting written responses and have provided their name and mailing address. I would like to emphasize that the date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. Under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the date of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain forms and brochures on the procedures from our Building and Safety Section Permit Services Center located on the same floor of this building. If you wish to speak, please write your name and address on one of these speaker forms which have been provided by the front door and submit it to our assistant. I would like to in also inform everyone that the official proceedings of the Zoning Administrator's hearing are recorded on tape as part of public record. Our first case is CUP 2007016. Location is 1911 <coughs> Melwood Drive. Applicant is Rodney Khan, Khan Consulting. And property owner is Rasmik Tatos. This is an application for a conditional use permit requesting to construct a new single family dwelling on a vacant lot 
where more than 1,500 cubic yards of earth material are proposed to be moved on the property located at 1911 Melwood Drive in the R1R Restricted Residential Zone Floor Area Ratio District 2 describe as portion of Baudry's Mountains Terrace. And let me just quickly go through some of the comments we received. <clears throat> From engineering section, a grading permit uh, is required. The applicant shall perform street, street improvements along the entire frontages of the property on Melwood Drive in accord with public work standards. Method of discharge of on-site drainage shall be approved by the city engineer. Separate permits are required for all work within the public right-of-way, and the applicant shall bear all fees for necessary permits and inspections. The applicant shall comply with NPDES requirements, and additional requirements may apply after the initial submittal of final engineering plans for plans check. <clears throat> From integrated waste management, again, the applicant must comply with Glendale construction and demolition waste reduction and recycling plans. And from maintenance services, they have um, some comments regarding trees that m might be affected by the development and also some suggested conditions or requirements on street trees. You can get a copy of this uh, memo. From fire prevention, project must comply with high fire hazard area requirements and installation of fire sprinklers and provide access to rescue windows. So. Who's going to be the first? Mr. Rodney Khan? Yes. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Fuentes. Good morning. My name is Rodney Khan, and my offices are located here in the city of Glendale. We started working on this project in 2006 to construct a new two-story single-family house on a very large lot. Our house is approximately 3,500 square feet in size. Uh, ground floor living area, the second floor has the bedrooms and bathrooms and sleeping area. We also have an attached three-car garage as part of the project. Uh, our architect, Franco Naravian, and our civil engineers, Hike Martirosian, they laid out the project, laid out the site, uh, very familiar with the city of Glendale's requirements. What I'd like to do is go over the findings necessary uh, to grant the variance request, and I do have an exhibit or two that I'd like to provide you at the appropriate time. The first item that the proposed use will be consistent with 
the various elements and objectives of the general plan. Uh, the land use element designates this site for low density residential development. It's part of the R1R, uh, Restricted Residential Zone. That zone, as you know, Ms. Fuentes, has very specific development standards. All of the development standards are being met. There are no variances. There are no exceptions that are required for this project. The new single family house will require 2,900 cubic yards of cut and about 3,300 cubic yards of fill. And if you look at the second sheet, the exhibit, it shows the brown area where the cut is taking place on the site plan. And the yellow area shows where the fill is taking place. In light of the recent discussions at the City Council level regarding lot slopes and hillside areas, we knew our project had to be appropriately sited, architecturally pleasing, and took into consideration the contours of the land. And that's why we've sited the building where we did site the building. Our design reduces the visual prominence of the building. It maintains the natural character of the site. And it also takes into consideration there are indigenous trees on this site. We will not be impacting or altering any protected oak, bay, or sycamore trees as a result of our project. And these design pr principles are consistent with the objectives of the general plan. The second item, that the use and its associated structures and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety, the general welfare, or the environment. I talked about the hillside character and where we placed this as it relates to the protected trees and not impacting them. A couple of handouts or what I'd like to give you is the property owner went around the area to get letters of support. And what I'd like to do is provide you those signatures that show the address, the proximity of those properties to our site and the support. Thank you. Our project will meet all new construction requirements which is the Uniform Building Code, or now the International Building Code, Engineering Code, and all Glendale Municipal Codes. In addition to which, there was recently modifications as it relates to the grading ordinance for single family. Our project will meet those new requirements as well. The third item, that the use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding property. This site was subdivided for single family use. Um, in terms of one other exhibit I'd like to provide you, what this shows is this shows directly adjacent to our site, which is a very large site, the size of the homes in the area. They range anywhere from about 6,000 square feet all the way down to about 2,000 square feet. So in terms of the size of our house being about 3,500 square feet, we're very much in keeping with the size of the homes in the area, in addition to which we are on a much larger site than those other homes. Thank you. We will be following all best management practices as described in Public Works Engineering. Also, the standard urban stormwater mitigation plan is going to be prepared, and that directly deals with the drainage and the grading that's going to take place. Uh, we talked with traffic and transportation as it relates to the haul routes that will be taking place. We are not going to be exporting dirt. Rather, we're going to be importing dirt. Uh, this project has not yet gone to the Design Review Board, but Mr. Naravian will take the project through, as he has done many times. Uh, also important to note, even though the City of Glendale does not have a view protection ordinance, we will not be impacting or blocking any views. Our site actually sits about 50 to 60 feet lower than the house above it, which is on Rima Vista. So there will be no interference with views. Um, also, I think it's important uh, to note that in terms of the last item, that adequate public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, 
parking and traffic circulation measures are provided for the proposed use. Uh, public and private utilities are located off-site. There will be new utilities, obviously, for the new house. Uh, Glendale Water and Power has the capacity to serve this house. There's adequate sewer, telephone, gas, and utilities, all utilities, to, for this new construction. Uh, as it relates to the landscaping, we have about 94, 95 percent of our lot is landscaping. We have a landscape plan that's been provided by a landscape architect, and he's incorporated into that plant palette uh, native trees that are uh, recognized and that currently exist up in the area, and also drought tolerant landscaping as well. Uh, finally, as it relates to that last item, it talked about parking and traffic circulation. Uh, in terms of parking, the code requires that 3499 requires two parking spaces. We're 3507. We're slightly more. We do have three parking spaces on site. Along with, we have an area on our driveway. As you can notice, it's a very long driveway uh, to get to the area of the site that is less steep. So we didn't need to do as much grading, but we have the ability to have on-site parking for visitors as well. Traffic circulation, the final item, we've met with traffic and transportation. I told you that we met regarding the haul routes. We've also met for the on-site and off-site circulation, which they've reviewed and approved as well. That will conclude my remarks. Obviously, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Mm, I, I don't have any question right now. So. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Franco Narabian. Good morning, Ms. Fuentes. My name is Franco Naravian. Um, my office is at 204, I mean, uh, 409 West Broadway, Glendale, California, 91204. Um, I'm the architect for the project. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, I think um, the design of the project is not so much of an issue because we'll be going to design review. Rather, it's the location of the site where we're proposing it uh, and and uh, the massing. We've We've tried to uh, place the structure in, in a place where it would be far enough away from the street that doesn't really have any impact on the uh, from the street. We're I think about 300 feet away, so you don't really notice it from the street. As Rodney mentioned, we're lower than the neighbor that's directly above, um, and uh, with the landscaping that we're proposing. Um, once it's all done, you're, it's pretty much the house will blend in with the with the surrounding, um, the you know the the other the, the topography that's there. So, other than that, if you have any questions, can I just know. ask yeah, you sure. to come up here and sure. walk me through your site plan? Sure. So, um, as a suggestion of our landscape architect. We, we introduced a curved driveway mm -hmm. to make it blend in. Uh, and as you can see, it is, is completely surrounded with a lot of trees and uh, landscaping all around it. So, so while it's being constructed, yes, I'm sure the neighbors will see some retaining walls and some slopes being uh, filled in and cut. But once it's done and it's landscaped, it, it, will, it will blend in. Uh, the site is here because the owner wanted to have some backyard, and um, this is the best place to to uh, to allow him to have a little bit of a backyard. If he placed it anywhere else, it would have been like a hillside house that's cut into the hill. Uh, uh, one thing to to mention because I was talking to some of the neighbors before the hearing started, and they were concerned about well, we're uh, it's a natural habitat, and but. Keep in mind that we're only uh, affecting a, a portion of the site. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, where is the, the yeah, all this area, and one of the neighbors mentioned why didn't we come from down below? There's a lot of oak trees here, and we're not affecting any of this area down below. Um, and up there too, right? And, and also here, yeah, in this area. I mean, there's no oak trees here, but we're not touching it. Okay. That's the elevation. Uh, yeah, that's so the elevations for now. Of course, after this, um, I would be meeting with planning staff and maybe making small changes to the elevations before we go to design review. Um, 
it's important to note also the site that's below us is a vacant lot. And this is the site above what we're saying. We're about 50 to 60 feet below. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Jim Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Brown. I live at 1900 Melwood Drive, which is uh, directly opposite the driveway entrance for this 1911 project. I just have some questions that I would uh, – I've lived there for 40 years, so naturally I'm, a, I'm opposed to it on general principles, but uh, I have some specific questions I would like to have uh, Mr. Khan or Mr. Naravian answer. What is the possibility of this lot, which I understand it to be somewhere in the neighborhood of five acres, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, of being split later and uh, additional houses put in. Another question is the traffic on Rima Vista during construction, the traffic on Rima Vista and on Melwood, particularly down in the cul-de-sac with large trucks coming in, moving, importing the dirt, as, as uh, Mr. Kahn said, I believe. Uh, coincidentally, nobody approached me about this project, and I've lived there 40 years at 1900. Uh, the parking I was interested in because one of the problems on Melwood in that cul-de-sac is parking when we have guests. It fills up the street, so I'm concerned about additional use of the street as, as a uh, parking area. I believe those are all the questions I have, Ms. Fuentes. Okay. And um, I'm sure the applicant will address your questions at the appropriate um, time. Today. Today. Thank you. If not, I will even ask them to stay after the hearing and talk some things with you. Okay. Tom Kane. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a resident of 1629 Open Gate Drive. I'm on the in the canyon on the other directly due east. Been there 40 years. Very much opposed to the project and the general grounds of this, the slope. It's a, that's at least a 45 degree slope to that canyon. I've walked that canyon. I've hiked that canyon. I know that canyon. I know the. I was on site when they built the house on Rima Vista, which will be on the top side of this house. They say, I'm like Jim was saying, that, that Rainbow Vista is a, is a dangerous curve there now. It's very sharp. And Millwood drops off at a, at a pretty good angle there. And there's a guard, even a guardrail there. And all that property, <clears throat> about three foot inside the guardrail, goes down 45 de degrees or more. And I can't see cutting into that hill because of the there's drainage, that's a wildlife corridor through there. I mean, we have bobcats, deers, coyotes, you name it, and they migrate through that area. So I'm very much opposed to this this whole development. And nobody contacted me. And I'm, in, I'm within the 500-foot uh, radius of it. And that'll be my direct view out in my backyard will be that, the, that side of that house. The whole property is in direct view of my backyard. I have about 17,000 square foot lot mm -hmm. and a fairly large single story house. But like I say, I'm very much opposed to this. I think there's better places that you could spend your money and build a house than this here. Uh, there, Mr. Mr. Kane. The canyon is already there. It's natural. So Mr. Kane, do you have anything, Mr. Kane? What? Do you have anything as far as the grading, the cut, and the fill is concerned? Because Unfortunately, the slope is not the issue that I'm hearing on this case today. As far as the cut and fill, the moving of the earth, um, do, you, do you have yes, any? Yes, I think moving that much, I don't see mm -hmm. why anybody would take a project on and want to double the requirements of the city mm -hmm. on cut and fill. Okay. There's been enough issues in the paper for the last 20 years about this thing, and uh, I just think it's too gross to dis attempt a project like this. Mm -hmm. So Thank that's you. That's all I had to say. Steve Griffin. 
Good morning, Ms. Fuentes. My name is Steve Griffin. I live at uh, 1910 Melwood, which is uh, just across the street from uh, this subject property. Uh, what uh, my two neighbors uh, said, I'd also say with regard to um, no one contacted me, and I'm literally right across the street from where this proposed driveway will go. Um, as much as I'm not opposed to someone developing land that they bought several years ago, I am very opposed to um, probably the impact not only on the canyon. I, I can't, as not, I'm not an engineer, I can't speak to the cut and fill nature of it, but it just seems excessive. It seems that there should be another way to access that canyon in the event that you wanted to build something in there and that uh, the construction and everything else that will be so disruptive to the neighbors in the neighborhood. Um, I, I would be concerned that there will be future development. If you just look at um, the way the driveway goes now, uh, there's parking at the end, but also there's a vacant parcel down there that that will probably benefit. So we'll probably have more development in the canyon at some time, which I think we would all oppose as well. Um, but I just think um, it's excessive to uh, to use this much of a violation of uh, civil or you know code policy to to do this much cut and fill on a site like this because it, it will be very disruptive and it won't benefit the neighborhood. Thank you. Is there anybody else here who would like to speak in support or opposition to this application? Mr. Khan, closing comments. Uh, once again, Ms. Fuentes, Rodney oh, uh, Khan. Be before you get started, I just want to, uh, just for the record, I have 29 signatures, I think, uh, 29 signatures from neighbors basically in support of the application. So they're on file. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to answer the gentleman's questions um, as they come up, in terms of the possibility of this being split later, this site being split later, if this site is going to be split later, new applications would be filed, new environmental would be filed, either a parcel map or a track map would be filed, there would be new public hearings, and there would be a different type of analysis that takes place as opposed to what we're reviewing here today. Today we are just here for a new single family house as we've shown on the site. Traffic, uh, the large trucks uh, coming in for the, it's actually for the import, as I mentioned uh, during my presentation. This is something that we've worked with traffic and transportation on in terms of the haul routes. We would meet what the requirements are of the city as it relates to the time of day when those haul or the routes take place and whatever other conditions that the city has as it relates to specifically that item. A gentleman talked about parking on the street and the area fills up. I think that on a regular basis, visitors coming to this house would opt not to park on the street. I think if you look at the length of our driveway, about 300 feet, I think you're going to see that visitors coming to this house will probably park in front of the house and not on the street. Occasionally, sure, they may have some visitors parking on the street just like any of the other homes in the area do. Uh, the one gentleman said he was opposed to this because of the slope. I think as you pointed out, Ms. Fuentes, we do not exceed the slope requirements. We're not here for that today. We meet what is the requirement for the slope. Uh, I mentioned also in terms of the, the presentation that I made about there's no deviations, no variances. We're not here asking for a variance. I think people get a little bit confused as to why we're here. We're not deviating from the code. The code specifically says if you exceed 1,500 cubic yards, you require a conditional use permit. That's why we're here. That does not mean it's a variance or deviation or anything from the code. Uh, then finally, as it mentioned, or the gentleman spoke about access, there should be other ways of access to this site. We looked at the other ways for access to the site. One, we w met with the city departments and said what their recommendations are and listened to what the requirements are. First and foremost, we did as it relates to on-site circulation. Then secondly, I think Mr. Naravian spoke in his presentation about the oak trees and the protected trees and why we could not come in from the other areas or other street access. Anyway, that concludes uh, my comments. I hope I answered the questions. If not, uh, please tell me and I'll try to answer them. Well, it
you, you may want to stick around and if they have some other questions they would like to ask, then maybe you could respond to I it. I certainly will. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, take this case under submission, and we'll let you know. Thank you all very much for coming. I still have a hearing if uh, you can ask the case planner. You may want to go outside. We'll have it. We'll have them in before you can come in tomorrow and look at them. Okay, our next case is conditional use permit 2008-001. Location is 3443 East Chevy Chase Drive. Applicant is Edward Hagobian and property owner is Iftakhar Zaidi. This is an application for a conditional use permit to construct a new single family dwelling on a vacant lot with an average current slope exceeding 50% and where, where more than 1,500 cubic yards of earth material is proposed to be moved. Located at 3443 East Chevy Chase Drive in the ROS, Residential Open Space Zone, describe a portion of Lot A, Sycamore Canyon Tract. And quickly going through some of the comments. We have an email from <coughs> Kathy Lefkowitz, resident of Edmonton Road, basically in opposition to the application. A letter from Herbert Harder. Is Herbert here? No. 3344 East Chevy Chase Drive um, in opposition to the application. I can see Mr. Dick Murray here, so I'm not going to read your email. I'd rather hear from you. <laughs> Thank you. I have a letter from James, James Ward here. So you're going to go through your. From fire prevention, um, this is a high fire hazard area, and they will be requiring that the 2008 uh, Glendale Building Code be met. Uh, fire sprinklers required. Um, landscaping and fuel modification with permit requirements per guidelines required. Fire department access to all rescue windows and doors. And okay, they have a high hydrant spacing requirement here and fire department turnaround may be required for 240 feet access road.
I have a list of comments here from engineering department, so let's see. From dedication, uh, dedication for street purposes, five foot strip of land, uh, sanitary, sanitary sewer connection, grainy, grading and drainage plan, Method of discharge of all on-site drainage shall be approved by the city engineer. Street improvements along the entire frontage of the property on Chevy Chase Drive to city standards. Proposed driveway shall conform to city standards. Applicants shall be required to bear all costs of relocation and or reconstruction of all utilities within the public right-of-way. Separate permits are required for all work within the public right-of-way, and applicants shall bear all necessary fees and construction inspections. NPDES compliant uh, projects shall be required. And there are also list of mitigation measures to reduce adverse environmental Im impacts for the project. For maintenance services, we also have comments here regarding trees and some of the street trees and location of new street uh, tree developments. From traffic and transportation, They're recommending that engineering should confirm the adequacy of the proposed driveway's horizontal and vertical curves, and vehicles exiting the site should not be permitted to back out onto Chevy Chase Drive. An on-site turnaround should be provided near the garage to allow exiting vehicles to turn around on the property. Site distance at the driveway should be should be maximized by limiting the height of obstruct obstructions north of the driveway. And these are recommended or suggested conditions. And we also have with us the case planner and our environmental planner. So if you have any specific questions that they, they may be able to take notes of them and maybe we could specifically issue a response at a later date or something, right? Okay. Um, I see a check that you filed with the Los Angeles County Clerk also on the Environment Office. Who's going to present the case? Okay, Janelle Williams. Good morning, Ms. Fuentes. My name is Janelle Williams, Williams Land Use Services. 2418 Honolulu Avenue in Montrose. Um, I've listened to the comments and I've, I've read many of the comment sheets. I've spoken with the project architect and um, we are complying with all of the conditions and all the suggested conditions of, of uh, both the code and the comments. <clears throat> we will go through the, the four findings. This is a conditional use permit 
uh, for uh, average current slope and grading. How will the proposed use be consistent with the various elements and objectives of the general plan? Uh, according to the general plan, this property is de designated for low density residential use. The proposed use is in conformance to the general plan. The proposed development is on a lot which, which meets all city standards for single family residential development in the ROS residential open space zone, which is consistent with the low density residential designation of the land use element of the general plan. The concept of that designation is to provide at least 40% of the property in an undeveloped natural state, which this project accomplishes with over 87% 87, 87 ungraded open space, far exceeding that requirement. The lot is served by Chevy Chase Drive. The right of way width in this location is 50 feet which will be increased to 55 feet with our five foot street dedication. The housing element provides that in areas where zoning and land uses are consistent and allow construction of owner occupied housing, such development is encouraged. Why will the proposed use and its associated structures and facilities not be detrimental to the public health, safety, general welfare, or the environment. The proposed use and its associated structures and facilities shall be in conformance to all governing codes and regulations set forth by the city. Construction methods shall continue and be maintained during the course of construction up to occupancy permit. The proposed single family residence is an estate home on a 67,736 square foot lot. It will be terraced per the hillside design guidelines parallel to the natural slope and it will have three levels, basement, first floor and second floor with a, with a four car garage. Due to the siting of the house on the lot, the design of the house itself the minimal earthwork quantity in light of this proposal, the street dedication and the substantial amount of ungraded open space remaining on the property, this house will not be detrimental to the health, safety, general welfare, or to the environment. And we believe that the mitigated negative declaration will, will bear this out. Why will the proposed use and facilities not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding property? The use of the proposed facility will conform to adjacent uses of single family residences, shall not have a negative impact or conflict with adjacent properties. No views will be blocked. Proper and safe methods of ingress and egress to and from the site shall be designed. The home will not be visible to those lots which are already developed with single family homes. The subject lot is of sufficient width and area to accommodate the development of the proposed single family residence. We seek no variances as we can meet each and every code provision. Development of the house consistent with the hillside design guidelines subject to review by the design review board will ensure that no conflicts exist with adjacent uses. This lot was created for the provision of one single family house. Explain how adequate public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, parking spaces and traffic circulation measures are or will be provided for the proposed use. All public and private facilities including landscaping, park it, Parking, traffic, and circulation shall meet and satisfy the minimum code requirements set forth by the city. Electric, water, gas, cable TV, sewer service, and telephone service is already available to the subject property. Parking for the residents will be provided in a fully code compliant four car garage. Adequate visibility for cars entering and exiting the property has been provided. Uh, a turnaround area on the site was des designed so that all traffic exiting the property will be facing out onto Chevy Chase. 
and will not be backing out of the property onto Chevy Chase. All oak trees on the site are being preserved and will be protected during construction. There are no oak, bay, or sycamore trees that will be impacted by this development. Uh, Edward Hagobian, the project architect, is here to talk to you about the design and the model. And um, I'll turn it over to him at this time. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ed Hagobian. Good morning, Ms. Fuentes. My name is Edward Hagobian. I'm the architect of this project. And uh, my address is 220 South Kenwood Street, Suite 210 Glendale 91205. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the model of that house which uh, we have shown only half of that uh, uh, property because it goes all the way to uh, the, as usual for this uh, hillside properties the first main issue for us was the driveway uh, the driveway is completely designed according to the zoning code and uh, we have a backup area already there, which I would like to show it to you. Why don't you go up here on the site plan first? I think it's easier. Yeah. Um. We have this area which is in front of this full car garage. The garage and yeah. Between the house and the garage. Between the house and the garage, all the cars can back up here and go head on to, to the street. Uh, the size of the house is under 8,000 square foot. And uh, 1,800 square foot of it is under floor area, which uh, if we don't use it, we lose it. It's there because of the, the, the construction and type of the structure that we have. So uh, if we take out that 1,800, in fact, uh, two story on top of it will be about 6,200 square foot. Uh, when we started this project, I the owner we visited the site, uh, it was uh, almost a hazardous condition in that property because people have thrown a lot of garbage and junk there and uh, a lot of trees were grown and, uh, and some of them were, were dead and uh, uh, the owner spent a lot of money just to clean it. And uh, my understanding is that if this house is built here, uh, this condition will change and uh, with the kind of landscape scaping that we have and the safety measures we have for for the driveway for the retaining walls this property that is in a in a hazardous condition now will turn out to be a beautiful addition to the city of Glendale uh, we have submitted a soil report that shows the exact location of the house at the site. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am sure that you have a copy of it. We decided to design this house in a way that we stay away from all the oak trees by far distance. So. We are not getting even close to those oak trees. That will be protected. Drainage, driveway slopes, and uh, um, turnarounds, and uh, all this will comply with the existing codes of the public works. And also, of course, the house will be designed ac according to international building codes. Uh, the house will have fire sprinklers which some of those houses in that area they don't have it and uh, we will satisfy fire departments all requirements and the only variance that we are filing today is just for the grading other than that all the setbacks, heights, 
front setback, side setback, re setback, height, uh, amount of landscaping, which is the double of the requirement. The requirement is 40%. We have 80, I believe, 81 or 82% right. landscaping. Uh, on this cut and fill uh, drawing here, the cut is the brown area and the yellow is the fill, right? Yes. Are you importing, exporting? W what are you doing with the earth that's going to be moved? Cut is uh, 2,330 cubic yards and fill is 100 40 cubic yards. Right. Are you bringing in or are you just, is everything just staying? So we will export the balance of okay. between the 2,300 and uh, 140 cubic yards. By the way, the driveway will be built on top of the um, columns, so underneath that will be open and landscaped and fully sprinklered. I was, I was just going to ask you to show me uh, uh, in that model, the 1,800 square feet area that you have under the the house, is it right? We don't have excavation here except a very small right. portion of it. But the rest of the excavation is underneath the house and this driveway. And, and that's the 1,800 square feet you were saying. You mentioned er earlier that you have 1,800 square feet under the house that's really not utilized. Oh, that space is, yes, uh, uh, this is the room here. Uh -huh. And uh, that is the result of the uh, byproduct of uh, the slope that we have. It's there. Mm -hmm. Either we have to close it and not, not use it. So, do you have a floor plan showing what your yes. intention of doing with the area? That is this area that we have uh, two, of course, we have to have two exits. This is one, and this is the another exit that through here they can have the fire escape. This area. And including that area, you're still within the code yes. requirements as far as height, number of stories, and everything is concerned? Yes, uh, including that uh, subterranean, I would say, room, uh, the height is okay. The floor area ratio, the maximum, we can go up to 8,000. 700, we have 7,900, so about 800 square foot lower than the required FAR. And the lot coverage is by far less than 40% uh, of it. Uh, that's all I can... Uh, did you meet with any of the neighbors? Um, did you discuss the project with any of no, the neighbors? No, we didn't. Okay, thank you. Vic Kachadurian. Madam Administrator, my name is Vic Kachadurian. My office, my address is 1101 East Broadway Suite 201, Glendale, California 91205. I am the grading engineer for the project and I will also be the structural engineer of the project. And I just want to state briefly that, uh, you know, obviously all safety and engineering requirements will be met and satisfied. We did already do an almost full geology report by J. Bayer Associates, a very respectable and uh, long-time resident firm of the city, and they determined that the slope is stable and buildable and underlain by bedrock. And as far as the grading proposed, the grading is, the, the design is is such that it's, min it's minimal and it's limited to the actual footprint of the house and the required backup uh, yard that's required by the code. We're not proposing any grading outside of the actual footprint of the house, and that's why our quantity is what it is, about 2,300. And, and as the architect mentioned, we even minimize the grading by elevating the driveway in the majority of its uh, length so that it will be suspended on structural columns so that it 
avoids further additional grading. And, uh, and as a result of all of these efforts, the impact on the total lot is about 15% of the lot is being impacted in the construction operation, the grading, and any construction activity that will happen. Over 80% of the lot will be left intact and measures will be taken to safeguard the existing native trees. And that's all I have to say. And I'll be happy to answer questions. Sure. I know. I, uh, I was just curious comparing the, the first case with this case. The, the first case is like half the size of your proposed house, yet they have bigger and more cubic yard or grading to be done on site than than your project. So, well, that is. That's I why I was looking at. I was looking at the difference. What what made that? I think we. Like uh, this, this, the planning involved uh, consideration by the architect and the engineer in 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 siting the house or shaping the house in a manner that it follows the contours of the property and if you look at the overall shape of the house, you'll see, you'll see that it's fairly elongated and the purpose is to minimize grading mm -hmm. as much as possible and, and the result has been somewhat successful in that grading isn't that excessive. Com so your, total, what we're your doing. total cut and fill will be about 2,470. That's right, for an, for an 8,000 square and foot house. And the first case was about 3,000. Yes, and this is, an, okay. this is a much larger house. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank, thank you thank very you. much. Mr. James Ward. This point is James Ward, resident at 3441 East Chevy Chase Drive. <clears throat> I submitted a document to you basically disputing the uh, mitigated negative deck that was filed, and I'm opposed to it. I believe this property actually needs a EIR environmental <clears throat> report, uh, impact report, due to a couple concerns. One is this canyon feeds directly into one of the only existing blue line streams in Glendale that's recognized by the U.S. Wildlife and uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, which is federally mandated waterways of the U.S. Uh, the drainage that comes through that canyon currently drains not only the property that's in cons uh, under review, but probably three acres of the land adjacent and above, which you can look at one of the maps they've shown everywhere from Emerald Isle down and the properties above all drains into a catch basin in that turnout and through the bottom of that canyon uh, down into that blue line stream. So all of the residential drainage and material that comes off of that facility would have to be captured and pumped back up to the street uh, at an extreme elevation. The other, this depiction you have on the board over here, it looks like the house lot size is very small compared to those adjacent eight structures on the right. Those are all 2,200 to 2,300 square foot houses, and this is an 8,000 square foot house, 7,960 square feet. The driveway that accesses this property is going to have to be cantilevered over a cliff that drops off 30, 35 feet within 20 feet of the road of Chevy Chase and will have to be constructed prior to the construction of the house due to be able to get vehicles in and out, the, the trucks that take the material out. I've, a lot of concerns about emergency vehicles, whether a fire truck can actually even get to this piece of property located in a brush native canyon. The other requirement from the fire department is 100 feet of clearance around a structure for fire protection. 100 feet will then take beyond the property line into that environmentally sensitive canyon. And so here are some photographs I'd like you to look at that represent the site. Thank you. On those photographs, I circled a couple bushes that are represented on multiple photographs. And what you will notice is directly above this property on the hillside is a failure of the slope, a landslide. In your plans, by the city shows that this area is prone to landslides and the house is situated right in that zone. This cut 
that they're referring to is 55 feet into the slope directly below Chevy Chase, a winding curvy road that has failure above it and during the rains of two years ago and will have failure below it. So there's a potential of actual structural loss of the Chevy Chase Canyon if that road was to collapse below it and taking things down into the canyon. So um, you've got a concern about that geology report because the potholes that were dug were up near the driveway in the bottom of the canyon. We saw the geologists go out and do their potholes. They did about six or eight of them. None of them were done on that slope. Okay. Um, the other thing is really this is kind of a in-your-face project. Two years ago, this project was proposed for a lot split with two houses that accumulated almost the same square footage. It did go to the zoning board, which was denied. It went to full council with all five members denying this project. Again, we stated that the environmental impact report needed to be done, not a negative deck. We have support of all the community that is surrounding it, and that I recommend that uh, it move on to a full impact report before it leaves this zoning and goes to full council again for discussion on this type of house. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Dick Murray. Morning, Ms. Fuente, city staff. I'm Dick Murray, president of the Chevy Chase Estates Association. I'm here to oppose the project. First, let me confess that somehow I failed to receive the notice or I inadvertently tossed it. In any case, I only became aware of it a few days ago. Uh, as a result, I've not researched it as fully as such an extreme application deserves. Nevertheless, I read this file Monday, and to say I was shocked is putting it mildly. This, get this, the proposed home is 7,900 plus, let's call it 8,000 square foot home, plus an 861 square foot garage. The total footage is 8,820 square feet, shades of El Tovar. It's more than three times as large as anything in the neighborhood. If three times the size of the other neighborhood homes isn't incompatible, then the developer must take us all, including you, uh, as fools. The code requires, and you know, the code requires that compatibility be determined. There is no way that uh, the zoning administrator or any other city body is going to find this compatible. The largest home anywhere around is 2,700. This is more than three times as much. Second item, in addition to the incompatibility, the project exceeds the slope. You know, slope is 50% by code. They say this is 59. I ask anyone who's ever been up there and looked at that project, it's straight down. We will, as we've done before uh, in the past, double check the often erroneous slope calculations. I believe it's much larger, much steeper than 59%. We'll check it. The site is indicated in the geological remapping area as a potential landslide candidate. Number four, the site is directly adjacent to the sensitive riparian ecosystem, which is governed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. There is a potential of soil contaminants, particularly when they're taking out 2,200 cubic yards plus the fill of being discharged into that blue line stream. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service may have some current concerns about that. The site is also a wildlife corridor. So number six, the lot has a narrow winding driveway and the fire department has expressed concerns as as the driveway is presently configured whether emergency vehicles may or may not be able to provide the fire and emergency protection that is necessary. Folks, I must tell you, this project is so extreme and it has so many variables that it calls for an environmental impact report, not just a mitigated declaration. Uh, and that, by the way, as Mr. Ward so clearly pointed out, is a very, very flawed declaration. And EIR is absolutely necessary in this case, and I believe that the findings that are required, the four findings required, cannot be made in this particular instance. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'm just going to quickly ask uh, our environmental planner if 
he has any comments or what are we going to do with some of those questions raised by Mr. Murray? Well, I'll, I'll quickly take a look at some of the comments that we do receive and then just re uh, took a look at them yesterday. This is Eric Krause, yeah, by um, the way. Excuse me, Eric Krause <laughs> of the City Planning Department. And it, to me, it looks like we do definitely need to relook at the comments that were made on the environmental document and have time to at least respond to them okay. in some formal fashion. So uh, I, I, would, I would recommend that we would continue the case until a time that staff can uh, take a closer look at the comments and respond to them in writing. Okay. Thank you very much. Ms. Hammond, did you fill out a... You're not going to speak? Oh, okay. And I was ready to listen to you. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I did take a look at the comments that you have raised, and this is what I'm going to do. I would like to give our environmental planner a chance to respond to all of your questions and and we're going to try to be as detailed as we can and address all of your concerns as far as environmental is concerned. The, the two issues I'm hearing today is the average current slope and the grading, the, the moving of the earth. However, those issues you raised today are, are really serious issues and concerns. So what I'm going to do, and if it's acceptable to both you know, to all of you here, especially the applicant, what I would like to do is continue this case to, I can't see the, <laughs> the calendar in front of me, a month, is, is that a, a good, you know, time? Uh, Eric, is a month a good time for you to address uh, some of this? Hopefully, I think it should give us adequate time to at least, you know, give you further direction on environmental review if okay. the additional review is necessary. So, <coughs> How about taking it off calendar and then, well, give me an idea when, what's a good time to, to get back? Well, Chris and I looked at the, at the schedule that for the ZA. It looks like, I mean, a month would be, you know, adequate as far as getting it on the reschedule. I can't say, you know, definitely what additional review would be necessary be, right. at this point, but. What I'd like to do is bring back the responses of the staff to a public hearing so everybody knows what's going on and what are the responses. So I'm thinking of October 15 or the 22nd. Um, anybody has any conflict? Yes. I You're going to be on vacation? I have conflict. That happens to be the Planning Commission. There's another coming up. Two in one day. 22nd be agreeable. I have the 8th or the 22nd, whichever one. Um. I can't do the 8th either. I'm out of town. Okay, 22nd. Let's do it. So what I'm going to do is continue this case to our October 22nd um, public hearing without further notice. So I don't want anyone to say I didn't get a notice. October 22nd, case number CUP 2008-001 is continued to our October 22nd public hearing without further notice. Yes, Ms. Williams. Uh, like Do you want to come up here? <coughs> uh, one item is related to the, the slope tax. This is done by a licensed surveyor. I know. I'm not questioning the calculations. I'm not questioning the the, the slope. All of those are going to run by, uh, we'll run them through our engineering department. They are the experts on calculations and, and all those things. So the only thing that I'm, uh, all of the environmental issues brought up, today and at, with you know on those letters we're going to try and address them so everyone's clear with what's going on okay and um, well two, two more uh, mm -hmm. issues I forgot to talk about that uh, big map that I have at the wall showing the location of this house uh, in relation to the other houses in that neighborhood mm -hmm. and the section that goes through showing the elevation differences and location of the houses 
May I come close to show that? Or? Sure, sure. Yeah. <coughs> In the plan, this is the proposed project, and this is the, the, the property here. The houses here in different colors, like this red relates to this right. section that we have here, and this red is this one, and this blue is right. this one. But as you can see, when, the, when we draw a section here, right. which is section AA, I believe we had also a section B. Yeah, C and B. Yeah. Uh, Relation of, you can see how this house is hidden from the view of those houses here and how high is this house related to this house. Right. And they are almost the same elevation of these houses here. Thank you. One more thing is related to the, the driveway bit. The driveway is not uh, nine feet as it is required by code. It's almost the double of that width of that uh, uh, nine feet minimum requirement. So the two car can easily pass each other in this driveway. At most part of this long driveway, not in a very short portion of it, but the rest is wide enough for cars to mm -hmm. pass each other. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so case number CUP <laughs> 2008 001 is continued or will be continued to our October 22nd public hearing without further notice and the reasoning is for additional information and clarification on environmental issues. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing at 10.15 in the morning. Thank you very much for coming.